Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to answer a question for a student of mine, and she was looking for a uh, for a coupon code, and if you're looking for Jamie Smith's version, go over to CF Pro Tools, and because Jamie had done this years ago, I never even really bothered looking at it or doing it, but she had found apparently several different versions of this, several different videos on uh, YouTube, and so she grabbed the code for one of them, but she couldn't get the code to work, and so she asked me if I could jump in and help her out. And uh, just to let you know, here is the original video that I got it from Cheryl Spangler. Digital Millions Marketing is where this particular version came from, but apparently there are several out there that are very similar. And here is what the code looked like that I was given. And immediately I saw a few issues in here, including they actually have one line of code in here that has already been commented out. Then down here they have another line of code where they're actually creating an input element onto the page, which again in this case here, you don't need an input element because we can uh, put an input element right into ClickFunnels and so we would not need to do that. We just reference the input element that we're going to create directly on the page. It also gives you more uh, more flexibility as to where to put it because otherwise this one here this line right here is where it says to put that and so we don't need this line of code either and it changed out a whole bunch of other stuff there's other bits in here and the selectors that are unnecessary and um, a couple other syntax things but the biggest thing that I think I found and it could be I had a couple errors at the end I finally got it to work after I fixed all of them but one thing here according to the specs there's say you should not use when using the in array jQuery method like this you should not be using the greater than sign here you should be using a not equal to because what the in in array method does is it returns the index of what they found and if it is not found it returns you the index of negative one so if it finds it in the first position, because jQuery is a zero based indexing, if it finds it in the first position, it'll turn return zero. So in our case here, we only have our singular promo code up here, but you could put in more. You just put a comma here at the end, and then you string together a number of different promo codes if you wanted that in there. And um, so... If it, if it finds this here, it's going to return zero, and so that zero then would not be equal to negative one, so it'll proceed and go forward and show the promo, uh, promo code and click on it, hiding the main product, I should say, showing the promo product and clicking on it and hiding the main product, and otherwise, if not, it will do the exact opposite. It'll show the main product, and I will show you how that works here in a second. So let's go to the live page right here, and right now you're seeing I have 50 off, which is our promo code, and it is showing the promo product. As we back up here and take any bit of it off that we want, it will go away until we specifically type in exactly what we need. Now, because what it'll do also is it will turn everything into uppercase, whether somebody types in the off as lowercase or as uppercase or part of each, um, it will turn everything to uppercase and then it will test it against what is our type, test it against what is our code right here. So here is the code that I created for this page. And let me just widen this out a little bit, even though I guess I don't need to. Well, before I show you the code, let me do this here. So we put in over here a promo code. Now, in this case here, I'm using just a, um, a one-step order form. I'm not using a two-step order form. And when I'm done with this video, I'm going to stop. I'm going to test just to make sure that everything should still work properly in a two-step order form. If not, I'll shoot some additional video at the end. But for right now, we have our one-step order form. We got our email. We got the submit the page button at the bottom. You definitely need those two things. You need the um, selector here for the product selector. You need the product summary down here at the bottom. And of course a credit card element in the middle and then this promo code thing is just a custom input and you can put that anywhere you want on the page so let's just open up that custom input we'll move this over what I did is I gave it and I will just get this 
out of the way. I gave it a data title here of promo code, and you'll see that in the code here in a minute. Click on update, and that gets put in there, and then let's go back to the element itself. Just put in here custom type is the very bottom one. Call, call, called it promo code, so this will actually save to the consumer's database if they put in their email address and, and finish and go through the form. And then here is the placeholder text, and if you want to give somebody a hint as to what the promo code might be, you might want to just type it in there and uh, let them see it and type it in. And no, it is not required. So that is it for the setup here. So anywhere in the form, you can put that in. Now, now that I think about it, I guess the reason why in here they put this input element just like that is because... Uh, in a two-step order form, it's a lot more difficult to put in that, um, that input like we did here, even though, now that I think about it, actually because of the way I put it in here, it will work the same. Well, no, actually it won't work the same because of the way I put it in here. So what you would have to do on a two-step order form is at the bottom of the two-step order form, in fact, what I'll do is, I'll, like I said, I'll pause at the end and show you how to do it with a two-step. So let's just take a look at this here. So we got our main product and our promo product. So how you do that is you come over here to your products, of course, and let me go back to these steps. Let that reload and automations. Oops, it popped me up to the top. Let's come down here to the bottom and we'll go to our products. And I have my two products in here. Now, if you have my bookmarklets, you can come in here, you click on this and you can show your product IDs, which will show them right there. Or just as simple, you can come in here to edit and you come up here to the top and your product ID is that number right there. Just grab that out of there and then you can put it into your code. And so you got your two product IDs there, you got your promo code right there, make sure you type it in correctly. When I was testing this, I had mine typed in wrong and it caused me all kinds of problems. And so then here we're saying um, value of promo product, we want to hide that one. So we're saying, okay, go into the code, find where that value of promo product is, go to its parent element and then hide it. And if we look at our values right here, we can come in here. Okay, it's actually right here. I was looking for the value equals promo product, but what this is, it's we're looking for the value equals this particular product number because that's what we did up here. We said we have a variable here of promo prod is then equal to this number. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna find the one with that particular number right here. We're going to go up until we find the L order product um, opt-in products, which is a mouthful to say, which is right here, and we're going to hide that. So we're gonna say, grab a hold of the promo code one and make sure we hide that on the page even though in our case here, because it's this, well, I guess they both would be showing, now I think about it, both of them would be showing. And then here's, here's the uh, bit here that uh, is probably the key to making this work, um, is the key up jQuery method that we are using here, and we're doing that to trigger a function. So as somebody types into the promo code here, every time they do a keystroke and they let the key come back up, it's going to test to see if what is typed in that blank is equal to any one of the promo codes we have up here at the top. So that's what it's gonna do right there. So then we got a variable of promo input is going to take that value that we have right there, take the value of what's being typed in there, it's gonna turn it into an uppercase, so it's all OFF in this case here is going to be all uppercase. And then it's going to test it right here. We're saying if it's in the array of our promo codes up here, if what we just typed in is in this array, then what we want to do is we want to click on the promo product and then hide the main product and show the promo product. Now, if somebody starts typing something in and they type in, in our case here, 50OFF, it will show it, but then if they backspace one and take the F off, then it won't be valid anymore, and then that's what will kick in the else on this page right here. And you're saying to yourself, okay, well, great, somebody knows how to hack into your code. How are we gonna stop them from being able to see what the promo codes are? First off, 
I wouldn't get too worried about it, frankly, because if you're giving somebody a promo code, give it to everybody. But there's a way around that, and we can do this right here where we can say up here in the top line in our script, we're going to say ID equals promo. And then down here, we're going to say grab that ID of promo and remove it. So what it will actually do is after the page loads, it will actually remove this entire script from the page. Now, can somebody still find it if they're really good and they know what they're looking for? Yes. Can your average person find it? No. In fact, most of the time, I can't find it. And um, so, and I'm relatively okay at using the uh, developer tools. So that is it. Um, it's pretty simple code. I mean, the real bulk of the code is really a couple lines right there. So let me just pause here for a second and check to see if this would work the same on a two-step order form. Okay, I've had the opportunity to test this, and what I found is I basically, well, I did have to build a complete new funnel step because where the product, uh, where the problem came in is there was too much repeat, redundancy, whatever, between one and the other. So because of that, I had to create a second one here that I call coupon code two-step, and then also in here, oops, let me go find that again there. We were right here. And then, of course, I had to recreate my products and then go in and grab new product IDs out of here in order to uh, be able to get this to work. And then what I also had to do in here was, let's close this out for a second. I had to, underneath now the two-step, I had to put in a... A, um, a headline element right here and I came in and I just grabbed the ID for this headline element and then I also put in an input field just like I had before and then also grabbed the ID for that input field and then in the code itself what I did is I put in this line of text right here I said let's take that input field and insert that before the credit card form so you see right here it goes right in before the credit card form and then the headline element we're going to insert that before the input element which was right here so that's the only difference in the code is instead of building it in place building it right inside of the one-step form, what we had to do here is we had to insert it into the uh, two-step order form itself. Otherwise, absolutely everything else is going to remain the same. And then when we come in here, we will have our, when we open up our two-step order form, we have now our main product at $200. And we type in here now 50 off. And now it changes to the promo product of 50% off only $100. And if somebody were to put in their name and email and their credit card info and hit complete, it should work just fine. But right now, I'm not going to test that uh, because I don't really need to because obviously we have the product summary, which is really the most important thing here. The product summary is showing us the proper product. So that is it. I'll show you the code here one more time. Code's not that terribly difficult. Um, you should be able to copy it right off the screen. Let me, in fact, here, let me pop this up a little bit. I'll sit here for a minute so that you can see the code very clearly. Just make sure you change out your product IDs up here at the top. Make sure your promo code is what you want and if you're on a two-step order form make sure you put in those two elements and then insert them into the form I did it right before the credit card element you can put it wherever you would like so that is it for this video if you have any questions just let me know